and this I'm going to make this a, a kind of a short video lecture, but I want to basically go over and explain the difference between substrate level phosphorylation and oxidative phosphorylation because these are um, some common questions I get. So let's step back actually and talk about what is phosphorylation and, and most of you probably already know this but I want to re-emphasize it is that phosphorylation is the transfer of any molecule or I'm sorry any phosphate okay to a molecule or a protein okay when, any, when a phosphate is added to something we typically call that phosphorylation so in most cases phosphorylation occurs by proteins called kinases okay these are enzymes that catalyze this phosphorylation sorry about that so typically um, kinases use phosphate from a molecule of ATP to add to a molecule or a protein so let's get a pen on here real quick so what you'll see here is that you'll have a molecule of ATP all right the ATP has three phosphates on the end all right and one of the phosphates will actually be added to a molecule and that's phosphorylation it'll generate an ADP as a product okay so uh, these are typically catalyzed by kinases and this is a very common reaction so that's phosphorylation all right so let's look more closely at what substrate level phosphorylation is so this is an event that occurs both in glycolysis and also in the TCA cycle and the definition that I really want you guys to know is that it's the synthesis of ATP by the direct transfer okay, of a phosphate group from a substrate, okay, from some molecule that already contains it, to a molecule of ADP. So in that previous reaction I just showed you of um, a molecule being phosphorylated by ATP, you can think of this as the reverse. We're actually making ATP by phosphorylating ADP. Okay. So again, these reactions, nevertheless, are still catalyzed by enzymes called kinases, all right? And there are different names for them depending on the steps, so every kinase might have a different name. But anything that can phosphorylate something is a kinase, all right? So instead of the phosphate coming from ATP here, the phosphate's coming from an existing molecule that we're going to call a substrate. So you can see here 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate has a phosphate there and a phosphate here. And we're going to take one of these phosphates and combine it with ADP to make our ATP. Okay, and you can see the phosphate's missing here. Okay, so this phosphorylation event occurred on the what we call the substrate level, meaning that there's some kind of substrate reactant that was used to donate that phosphate. And so that's what we refer to as substrate level phosphorylation. So in this reaction from glycolysis, 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate becomes 3-phosphoglycerate by phosphoglycerate kinase and it makes one molecule of ATP by substrate level phosphorylation. Now this reaction can actually work in reverse so if you take ATP okay you can take that phosphate phosphorylate this and create 1,3-bis phosphoglycerate again okay so this is a phosphorylation reaction but the synthesis of ATP by the transfer of a phosphate to ADP is what we consider substrate level phosphorylation and if you remember from our free energy lectures that these molecules that contain uh, phosphates on them are high energy intermediates so this is a favorable reaction to occur so that's substrate level phosphorylation let's look at another example of substrate level phosphorylation here's 1,3-bis-phosphoglycerate again um, plus ADP I'm oh, sorry this is the same example I gave you earlier um, to make 3-phosphoglycerate and ATP. Okay, so if I show you this reaction and I ask you what type of reaction this is, you should know that this is substrate level phosphorylation, but you also should know that the kinase is responsible for this reaction. All right, so that's substrate level phosphorylation. You'll know it's substrate level when, when what you're seeing is the phosphates donated from some kind of molecule or reactant, okay? So that's substrate level. So now what's oxidative phosphorylation? So oxidative phosphorylation is, is still, we're talking about the synthesis of ATP. Okay, let me grab my pen again. So we're still synthesizing ATP, but we're doing so in a different way. We're actually oxidizing these electron carriers, NADH, and we're also doing this to FADH2, all right? We're combining oxygen 
to oxidize these molecules in order to generate ATP. But it's not on this same, it's not this type of phosphorylation. We're not taking a phosphate from anywhere here from a substrate and putting it onto ADP. We're actually taking ATP, ADP and PI and combining them together in a mechanical reaction, all right? And that's how we're synthesizing ATP. So it requires oxygen to oxidize the electron carriers to provide the force or the energy to do this mechanical synthesis of ATP, and that's referred to as oxidative phosphorylation. And this occurs only in the electron transport chain, okay? So substrate level occurs both in glycolysis and TCA, and oxidative occurs in the electron transport chain. So let's look real closely at what this means. So we're gonna go into more detail about this when we get to the electron transport chain, but what I wanna show you is kind of what happens. So remember, the ETC occurs on the mitochondrial inner membrane. So this is mitochondrial inner membrane. Oops, sorry about that. And on the inner membrane are a series of enzymes. That's why it's called the electron transport chain. But let's just draw, let me draw the plasma membrane again. So, you know, it's a lipid bilayer or something like this. Let's just draw one little globular thing. Let's call this the entire electron transport chain. This is the ETC. And we're gonna show, I'll show you exactly how this works later in the semester. But what happens is our NADH or our FADH2 come into the ETC, okay? And they react with oxygen, molecular oxygen, and they become oxidized. And what happens is you generate the oxidized form, so NAD plus or FAD. Another byproduct from this is water, okay? Because we're taking the electrons and the hydrogens that these are carrying, combining it with oxygen to make water. That's why one of the main byproducts of cellular respiration is water. This reaction provides a force, right? And you don't need to know what it's called yet. We'll get to it later. But the force is given to a protein, right? In the, mito in the mitochondria, that's called ATP synthase. And you don't need to know this for this test, but just in case you're curious. And what ATP synthase does is it basically takes ADP and it takes inorganic phosphate floating around and it forms a TP, okay? So it takes these two molecules and just pushes them together to actually form a molecule of ATP. So we're not transferring phosphate from a molecule to ADP. We're taking just free-floating inorganic phosphate molecules, combining them with ADP to form ATP, okay? And that's oxidative phosphorylation. So let's go back and review real quick. Substrate level phosphorylation is, this, and the, both substrate level and oxidative phosphorylation are the synthesis of ATP, okay? So just remember that, that you have to, you're synthesizing ATP for this. Substrate level is the synthesis of, phosph of, of ATP by the, the transfer of a phosphate molecule group from a molecule or a substrate, some kind of reactant, to a molecule of ADP to form ATP. Oxidative phosphorylation is the use of oxygen to oxidize electron carriers in order to generate some kind of force that will actually push together ADP and PI to form ATP. So hopefully that cleared that up. Um, uh, if you're more confused about this, please let me know um, and we can go over it again. But, but I really want you to understand the difference between the two I want you to know in which stages, I'm sorry, which stages of cellular respiration um, do each one of these things occur. And obviously I would like for you to be able to recognize the reaction. So if I show you a reaction like this one here, I would like for you to tell me that that's substrate level phosphorylation and not oxidative phosphorylation and vice versa.